It's Sunday, December 23rd here at the West End Gun Club. It's a pretty active morning. Uh, it's about just after seven. I was here at around 6.30, but I was over uh, on the other side of the facility taking a few photos for a couple stock photos that I wanted. And I'm just here in the Rimfire Range to get a few rounds down range on this weekend before Christmas. And it's just a casual shooting day. Uh, I actually came out here more to take some stock photos than I did to shoot, but I figure if I'm gonna drive out here to take a few photos, I may as well uh, get off some rounds. So we're gonna go ahead and get set up and uh, we'll start the day. So this is the second range vlog in a row. I'm here at the Rimfire range of the West End Gun Club range facility. I like shooting Rimfire simply because it's less expensive. I'm not reloading any ammo, although theoretically you can reload Rimfire. People have done it, but I'm not reloading ammo. It's less expensive to uh, shoot Rimfire if you're buying factory ammo. And obviously I like this part of the facility because hardly anyone uses it. And the last range vlog was a week ago from today and I looked at all the stuff and where we set the chairs before we left. There's everything is exactly where it was left. So in that whole week, I don't think anyone's used room fire range. I could be wrong, but if I recall the way we left all the, the rolling benches and the chairs, that's exactly how we had left it. So yeah. This range, the Rimfire range doesn't get any traffic, so it's just a nice, quiet place to shoot if you just want to be by yourself. Um, I used to, I mean, I'm, I'm a fairly sociable person, uh, believe it or not. And uh, back in my old range, you know, we had a core group of guys that shot on Sunday mornings. It was mostly older gentlemen. And we always, you know, I'm always, I was always uh, happy to, to hang out with that group. Um, you know, those guys were very, very uh, friendly. Uh, very good people, and it was nice to just eat breakfast with those guys in the gun in the uh, clubhouse, shoot with those guys, eat lunch with those guys at the range, and then leave. You know, it's just nice to converse with those with those with those folks. And uh, but like right now, like the way I shoot, I just tend to like to be by myself now. Don't know why, but uh, it's just simply because I think. I'm trying to do a lot of things when I come to the range now, when I do the video stuff, I'm always testing stuff out. So it's a lot easier for me to function at the, when I'm here at the range, if I'm just shooting alone. Um, it sounds kind of just like nomadic and whatnot, but it's just the way it is. But I mean, I'm always, I'm fine when, you know, when guys just want to talk. I mean, I'm, I'm very happy to talk with folks. Um, you know, I just don't include them on camera. You don't see it, but a lot of times people want to converse. And, and we have conversations and, and whatnot and, and trade trade uh, trade ideas, trade information or whatever. And people are always asking about what I'm shooting, whether it's a six millimeter Creedmoor or the Valkyrie or whatnot. So, but anyway, this is kind of why I like to shoot room fire. So that's why I'm here at the room fire range. And I, I anticipate, to be honest, I might actually buy another room fire rifle. I'm looking to get a Voodoo. I kind of wish I bought the Voodoo action and, and barreled action before I bought the Nucleus action. A Voodoo, I think, is $1,800 just for a barreled action. And if you don't know what a Voodoo is, uh, I'll post a link in the video description when I post this vlog. But it's basically a Remington 700 footprint bolt action that is rimfire. So it's, it'll, and it uses AICS mags, or style mags rather. So I, should, I think I should rephrase it. Basically, you're gonna set it into an, uh, any chassis or stock that accepts AICS mags. And then they have their own magazine that is an AI, AICS like box dimensions. So you can use their mags, but then you can use any AICS compatible stock. So it's great if you're gonna wanna shoot rimfire, but you want a gun that functions similar to your other guns, like your other center fire rifles. And it's also great, like if you wanted to, if you were budget minded, I guess, you can get a Voodoo barreled action and then just swap it out with your 
chassis from your centerfire rifle and so you can have this you use the same chassis but with two different barreled actions and it's a nice way to go in order to just have a nice practice gun and they're very accurate a lot of people i've seen a few in person they're pretty nice guns so i'm, I'm probably gonna get one of those as my next gun and uh, i might actually get a voodoo before i even build up that nucleus action so anyway i'm going to try to set up this lab radar um, I kind of wanted to shoot some chron uh, chronograph a couple loads, and if you recall from previous vlogs, it does take a little bit of finesse to get the lab radar to pick up my rimfire because I don't have the external microphone. So, we'll see if we can get that to work. So I have some old wolf match target. We'll try this up. I need to shoot this up. When I say old, I don't know if you're checking to read the uh, lot numbers, but this stuff should be pretty, at least uh, five to 10 years old. I did clean this barrel since the last range outing, the last, last range vlog. So it might need a few fouling rounds to to shoot accurately, but 25 yards, even with this five mile an hour wind, it shouldn't be too bad. So if you, as you can see, it, the lab radar picked up my round, so it's 1068 feet per second. It's only 25 yards, so these groups are going to be fairly tight, but this is the older wolf match target. This is the newer wolf match target, which slots slightly better uh, if you just go based on edge to edge. And this is the SK, which shot really good or really well. Uh, it's, I don't know, that's barely a quarter of an inch, but you expect this at 25 yards. Once you stretch it to 50, that's when, that's when rimfire tends to open up. Either the lab radar is trending wrong, but it's recording about 969 on all those all those rounds. It was a 10 round aggregate with the newer Wolf match target, 958 feet per second out of the 16 and a half inch barrel. Very interesting. Shooting the 1022 takedown, first group was good. The second groups were not that great. Uh, not sure what was going on here. I shot a nice small group with the old match target, the new match target, and the old, uh, the new SK up and down stringing. Not sure if that's me or what, but uh, it's not good. Shit, this is what it usually shoots at, so might have just been shooting sloppy here on these last two strings.
and paying attention more to the chronograph than the actual shooting. So I'm going to go ahead and stretch it out to 50 because I want to I want to chrono those loads out of the 1022 takedown with a little more uh, bullet flight time because uh, when you're shooting the, when you're using the lab radar, I mean it flies to the target and the the bullet hits you know it hits your target and the lab radar is looking at this so once the bullet gets past this the lab radar may or may not detect it depending on how this target blocks its radar path but it could be influencing it or it could the lack of flight time may have issues or may cause issues with the accuracy so i'm going to go ahead and stretch out the 50 to see if the uh if the velocities for the 1022 are also still trending under a thousand feet per second Fired a couple more strings at 50 yards with the 1022 takedown, and it looks like the averages are actually as red. They're 967. It's under a thousand feet per second. So if we look at this 10-round string, you're looking at start from the beginning here. 1003. 950, 64, 966, 951, 973, 981, 960, 964, 934, 973. So it's actually trending around 960 feet per second out of this 16 and a half inch takedown barrel. I think I could actually see the trend of the group and it doesn't look like it's that good at 50, but we'll go ahead and walk out there and take a quick look. It is apparent that the trajectory of the 1022 takedown at 50 yards takes a significant drop. So here's the first groups. They're about, I would say, I had to come up, I came up one click. I should probably come up two more based on my 25 yard zero. But you're losing about an inch, a good inch and a half drop from, from the 25 to 50. That 960 feet per second muzzle velocity is not holding a good trajectory. So the question is, do I run higher velocity loads in this 1022 takedown. I'm gonna to have to order some. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the trajectory. I'm gonna adjust my the uh, red dot and see if I can get it centered in at 50 and then compare it to what it looks like at 25. But I may think about getting some higher velocity loads from Target Sports USA or I might even stop by Bass Pro on the way home and see what they have in store. So we brought the target back to 25 yards and shot on it again with the 1022. Shot a few rounds, did an adjustment, shot some more rounds, and this is where we have a 10 shot aggregate. So I'm gonna leave the elevation here. Elevation windage at that spot. Not entirely sure how it's gonna shoot at 50. I guess I can probably run it back real quick and fire some rounds, but it did open up at 50. This is kind of where it, it trended. I'm not liking the velocities I'm apparently getting out of this I didn't realize I was getting this slow a velocity out of this 1022. So it's a bit surprising. So I'm gonna, like I said earlier, I'm gonna go ahead and find some high velocity rounds. I actually have some CCI blazers, which aren't that very high velocity. I have some Remington high velocity rounds in there, like some from a pack. But I'm gonna go ahead and just hold off because I have no idea what the state of that ammo is. Like that CCI blazer, that stuff could be at least 15 years old. As far as I know, it's been sitting in, a, in an ammo can. I, I threw it, like all my 22 stuff in this small ammo can that I brought to the range today. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and order some high velocity rounds from Target, U uh, Target Sports USA, and I'm gonna try to hit a Bass Pro. I mean, it is the 23rd on a Sunday, uh, two days before Christmas, so I'm not entirely sure it's be a good idea to head out there to take a look or uh, try to shop there. But we'll swing by, and if the parking lot doesn't look too packed, I'll see if I can drop in and out over there. But yeah, uh, that's kind of it for this. Uh, I guess as far as velocity and group testing. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and pack it up. I might fire some rounds on that steel that's sitting over there, and then uh, then call it a day. Before I head out for the range, I did want to take the opportunity to answer one question that I get quite often, and that's what watch do I wear to the range or every day? So I get those, this question a lot because people are just curious because in, in the vlog, they'll see me wearing a G-Shock of some sort. But as of late, my kind of my standard range watch is the, the recent range band or the newest range band, which is the GPR B1000. Uh, 1B, I think this is what it's called. I can't recall the exact uh, the exact model number, but this is the most recent range man with the with the GPS capabilities. I do have an article reviewing this on my vlog or my blog rather, and I also have a video review. So check that out. But this is my most recent, I guess, watch that I, I acquired that I wear when I'm doing active stuff. So when I'm at the range, I'll wear this. So you often see this. And then from every day though, that is going to be the Rolex GMT Master 2. This is the 116710 BLNR, so that's 116710 BLNR. This is the uh, GMT Master 2 with the blue-black ceramic, so it's black ceramic on the bezel, blue ceramic on the bottom of the bezel, so we call it day-night. This has been around for like five or six years, and I've owned it for five years. And this is kind of my everyday office watch. Usually and then sometimes I'll wear my blonde palm 50 fathoms bathys calf, which is um, Another watch that I I tend to wear More often than the other ones in my collection and so this is a large case. It's a 43 millimeter So it's a little bit difficult to wear when you're wearing um, Sleeves long sleeves with cuffs like button cuffs So I don't wear this to the often uh, to the office too often if anything if I'm wearing a sweater or short sleeves or something I'll wear this to the office and I'll wear this on the weekend. So the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe stainless steel. It's got a rubber strap. Um, I try. I have sailcloth straps. It originally came with a sailcloth, but that wore out after a couple years. I bought another one, and it started wearing out after less than a year. So I went with a rubber strap, which is an official Blancpain rubber strap. And I've been happy with this strap. But I tend to wear. This is like my everyday watch, office watch, when I'm at work. Sometimes I'll wear this to the office, and sometimes I'll wear this on the weekends. And you'll have, sometimes you'll see it in the range vlog, I'll wear it to the range. And then this is kind of mainly my primary range watch as of late. So anyway, that's kind of hopefully that answers those questions from people who are asking. Because they often see me wearing a watch of some sort, and then um, they're just curious about it. And so I get the question often, what watch am I wearing? So anyway, that's kind of it for that. Stopped over in the creek on the way out from the range just to close out the vlog. It's a pretty quiet day for my shooting, but as far as the rest of the facility, it was pretty busy. Lots of, I think there was a match going on, at least one match, and then quite a few guys, or quite a few people just in the other bays just doing some shooting. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for today. Not much going on, just wanted to take some photos while I'm at the range, or I came out the range to take some photos, decided to uh, get some rounds down range while I was here. And unfortunately, the uh, 1022 breakdown or takedown wasn't performing very well at 50 yards uh, based on the lab radar uh, results. It looks like I might have to try some high velocity rounds. So we're gonna go ahead and get some of those uh, to come out for a future range visit. Anyway, today is December 23rd, Sunday. Um, I might not come out to, I was gonna go, come out to the range tomorrow, but I probably won't. Um, I won't have time, but if I don't, 
I just wanted to wish everyone out there a Merry Christmas. And uh, if I don't shoot before New Year, have a Happy New Year. But I anticipate I'll be shooting sometime after Christmas and before the New Year. So anyway, have a Merry Christmas, everyone. And thanks for watching this vlog, and I'll see you in the next one. So I brought it back to 25 to see if we could at least get a generic 25 yard zero again to make sure the elevation's okay. I have no idea what's going on on the other side of the range. I'm not sure if it's a match, but, or just a bunch of guys shooting volley fire for fun. Yeah, no idea what that is. Anyway, 